Now that you have learned creating view pages and layout files in Laravel, it's time to make these web pages dynamic by sending the data to the view and displaying it in a particular format. So let's get started. Hey guys, this is Neha from Webstack. Welcome to another video on Laravel series. So before getting started, if you are new here, make sure you click on that big subscribe button and do hit the bell icon to get all the latest videos from me. So many a times in your website, you will be requiring a dynamic data on your website. So it can be a fetch from the database or any other third party API. The motive is to fetch the data and display it on the web page. So let's see how to do that. If I just open this uh, VS code and this is my web.php file. So to send the data, let's say uh, it's my product repository project. So I'll say that I need to send some product details like name, price and description to my web page. So how will I do that? So whenever I'm returning the view products, I need to send that description with that page. So what I need to do is I need to write a second argument. Uh, while in the view method, you just need to write the second argument and whatever data you need to pass, you have to pass it in the form of array of objects. So you need to pass it in the key and value pairs. So let's say I want to pass name of the product. So I'll just write name and then you need to write this arrow mark and then after that the value that is let's say I want to sell a Asus laptop. So this is my product name. So now this array will be passed to this products page and let's go to the products page now. So in this product page now I need to display uh, the name of my product. So what I'll do is I'll write, I'll display it here in this division and then I'll use the blade template. So you can use uh, PHP tags as well like echo inside the PHP tags, but I'll be using the blade syntaxes in the series. So it's very simple plus it gives you less amount of code that you need to write. So whatever you want to display, you just need to write dollar and then the key which you are giving in that array like here so i'm giving the key as name so i'll be writing dollar name and that's it this will display the name of the product on your website so let's check this out first and refresh the page and then just click on the products page because we are displaying that on the products as you can see here we have this value below this page so that means the product name is displayed by simply just writing double curly braces and also I'll just tell you one more thing that it also acts as a substitute of what is known as HTML special chars that you basically use in PHP which will escape the meaning of the special characters like ampersand or this symbol or then forward slash or uh, greater than or less than symbol so these symbols have a special meaning so to escape that meaning we use this HTML special chars method and instead of using these methods in this blade we have double curly braces which is provided. So it's really easy and let me just cut it from here from the comments and let's write it below. So now if I refresh the page you can see that there is a product name. Uh, let's say I want to uh, pass another information about my product. So what I can do is I can just write another value inside this array by separating it with commas. So let's say another value is say brand or uh, we actually already know the brand. Uh, let's say for an example the brand is Asus. So and also let's say I want to display the price. So here I'll be writing price. Oops. You need to write it in uh, quotes always, the key and the value. So let's say price and then the value of price, let's say 30,000. So that's it. And now if you want to display here, you need to separate it like you can write here um, something called product 
price and then you can display the price in the double curly braces as we have done for the previous key that is name. So let's say I'll write here dollar and then the brand. Oops, I need to display price here. Let's say price. And then uh, let's say in the name, I'll change as laptop. And in the brand, I have a source. So I'll just write name with brand. And then I'll write the brand here. So that's it. Let's just try it out in the page. So now if I refresh it, it says laptop with brand Asus, product price 30,000. So that is how you will pass the objects or the variables to the web page. And for the time being, it is static, but it can also be fetched from the database. So in the upcoming videos, you can see how to fetch the value from the database as well. If I need to pass this data, uh, like if uh, I need to pass the multiple values, so what you can do is you can just replace it, uh, cut it from here, paste it here and store it in a variable. So I'll just store it in a variable called product so that I can pass it inside the view method. So I'll simply write here dollar product. So this will actually pass your array. You need to write a semicolon here. So that's it. If I just refresh the page again, it will again show me the same data. So let's check out one more thing. If occasionally you want to send the data to all the web pages, so what you can do is you can just write it here, but it would be very tedious task because there are n number of pages and you cannot pass the data and particularly the same data to each and every page in this view method. So what you can do is you can uh, write that code of sending data in one file and it will be sent to all the files. Isn't it amazing? So this is provided by Laravel. So we have to do that in a file called app service provider. So if I open this file, you can check that there are some functions written inside it that is register and boot. So you don't have to go in depth for these files. You will get familiar with it as you will progress in the series. So now what you need to do is you need to write the code in the boot method. So whatever sharing thing you need to do, you have to write the code in boot method. So this file gets called as a middleware before every service is getting called. So that means this boot method will actually run before you make the request for any page. So now in this boot function, what I'll do is I'll write view. This view is a class inside the Laravel. And then we will use a method called share. And inside the share method, you can give the key and the values. So I can write the key as, let's say I want to pass tax to each and every page. And the tax value, uh, say 25%. And yes. So what I need to do now is I need to display this tax in each and every web page. So I'll just write here something called, let's say, uh, what is something like this. And then to display, we will use the same blade template that is double curly braces. And then I'll write here dollar tags. So that's it. And let's write it into another uh, pages. So I'll write here the same thing. Let's copy paste this line. And then write it here. Save it. Let's say in welcome.blade.php as well. I'll write this code. And done. So if I refresh the browser now, you can see we are getting an error that says app providers view not found. So let's check out this app service provider file. As you can see, it is not able to find this view class and certainly we have not included this view class anywhere in this page. So to do that, we will be writing use illuminate and then we'll write support. Don't worry, these are just classes names and inside it we have a class called packets. This is a file in which you have the class for view. So don't worry and don't panic with these names. Uh, though I also did earlier, but uh, you don't need to worry as this is very simple and everything is provided in the documentation as well. So you can go to the documentation, read it thoroughly and you will get an idea what these files are used for. 
So now let's save it and go to the browser again, refresh it and here we go. So it's saying VAT is 25%. Let's check the about us page as well. And there it is, that is VAT is 25%. So you can check that in all the pages now we are passing the same tax value. So this is how you can share the data with all the views using this app service provider file. So that's it for this video guys. If you like the content, hit that like button and do give the thumbs up in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and bell icon to get all the latest updates from me. So see you in the next video.